Hey everybody, this is Mike from the Action PC Community website. Uh, I was watching a video on YouTube uh, earlier today. Um, Dave Gardner, who runs the uh, Digital to Dice podcast along with Ron Juckett, uh, was playing Action PC uh, golf uh, at the St. Andrews course with Cameron Smith, and he was getting very upset. Um, Dave apparently has had issues with action PC golf. He feels it's um, problematic in, in the number of mishits uh, that players have. So uh, just for giggles, I figured I'd try to play uh, the same course as he did uh, under the same conditions. I'm not exactly sure what weather he picked, so I'm just going to choose the live weather and uh, start the round and see what happens. Okay, so the first thing I saw that Dave did was he hit driver on this first hole. Um, most players don't hit driver because of the, the burn running across the green, the little water hazard. So, I mean, you could hit three wood just to be safe because if you hit driver, you could potentially run it too far and, and end up in this water or if you miss it. So if I hit something less, I kind of take that out of play. So I can even hit like a five wood. So you see, even though I hit a 5 wood and not a driver, I still ended up in good position. Uh, one thing to, to worry about here, you obviously don't want to bring this into play, so you definitely want to hit a little bit further than you think you would. But remember that, you know, St. Andrews is a link course, and links courses, um, you know, the ball rolls out much further. So you may aim here, but the ball may end up over here. So... Uh, that's another thing to kind of keep in mind when you play certain courses. So, ideally I would probably want to aim here, but I don't want to bring this water into play. So I'm going to aim a little bit further. I'm going to put some extra spin on it. It's probably going to still end up here, but I can use this slope as maybe as a little back uh, backstop and the ball will hopefully end up somewhere around here. Okay, so it ended up pretty much exactly where I was kind of hoping for it. See, it caught a little bit more of that slope. So we have a 16. A regular putt is 12.95% of a make. I'm sorry, a 16.56. Aggressive, 17. But then I leave it three feet past. I'm just going to do a regular putt here. Okay, missed it. Easy par putt. second hole narrow driving area again I don't need to hit driver because I bring this narrow narrowness into this is the widest part of the fairway so I really only need to hit it about 250 and again since this is a links course you see the ball rolls out you know an extra 20 30 yards in this case it actually rolled an extra 40 yards um, this is going to be a very tricky shot because there's this little uh, slope that will make uh, short shots go back into the fairway so I really need to hit at least 115 uh, if I hit it 119 it's probably going to miss the entire green so rather than screw around with this I'm just going to aim for the fat part of the green this is kind of a sucker pin meaning it's, there's such a there's really like only a nine yard landing area of where this pin is. So I'm going to try to take that out of play and just kind of just try to hit into the middle of the green. All 
All right, so now I'm very far away, so I'm just going to do a lag butt. And just hope it gets within three or four feet, which it did. Okay, made his par. So, again, when when the hole placements are difficult like this hole was, you don't necessarily have to shoot at the, the hole location every single time. You don't have to shoot at the flag. So in this case, I played conservatively. I hit into the middle of the green. I was happy to just take my par on this hole. Now we have a wide open driving area. So now's, now's an opportunity to kind of hit the driver if I want. There's really no out of bounds. I just really have to worry about this bunker. Oh, he missed that a little bit to the right in the rough. But that's okay. I'm not in a deep rough. I'm not in a bunker. So since I'm in the rough, the ball is going to roll even further out. So I basically want to hit it about right here. See, it rolls, see how far it rolls out? Now I caught the slope and it rolls into this little collection area. So now I have a very long putt. So now birdie's out of the picture. So again, I just want to make par on this hole. So I'm going to lag putt. Okay, another good par right there. So again, sometimes you just have to limit the damage on a hole. Like as soon as the, the player hit a poor drive, I knew that birdie wasn't happening. So instead of trying to hit a hero shot, I'm I, I just try to take my par and move on to the next hole. Extremely tough driving hole. You can see there's rough up to about 281 yards. So out of bounds over here. So I have to basically thread the needle to either land here or pick this side. In this case, I'm going to try and see if I can clear the area. That looks like it's going to clear it, and that turns out to be a good location for that drive. So not much trouble, right? There's no bunker here. Uh, let's look at the sloping. So basically, I can have kind of have I have a little backstop here so I can take dead aim at this whole location so again with links the trick is figuring out how much rollout you're gonna get so 136 would be about right here 143 I'm gonna hit 1483 I think this might be a little bit long but We'll see if the backstop will save it. So again, this is Lynx Golf. I mean, you know, the ball's going to run out further than you really think it will. Okay, another par. So missed opportunity there. That, that hole I really wanted to birdie. So pretty wide open fairway here. Bunkers here I definitely want to stay away from. So I'm going to aim right in the middle now. If I run out, if I miss hit it to the left, I'm going to potentially hit in, into this rough. So again, I don't need to hit driver here. I can hit three wood. Even though it's a par five. See, he pulled it a little bit to the left. But at least I'm still in the fairway. I'm not in that rough like I would be if I hit the driver. So downhill lie, ball's below my feet. When the ball's below your feet, if for a right-handed golfer, it basically means the ball's going to squirt to the right a little bit. Downhill lie means the ball's going to kind of run out a little bit more. So I need to hit well short of where the flag is. So if I hit about right here, the wind's blowing right to left, but the lie tells me the ball's going to travel to the right a little bit. So if I aim basically dead at the flag, 
a little bit short. I think this might be okay. Might end up a little bit short. We'll see how much run out we get. So almost made the green. So that's an okay shot from there. So again, I have a super long putt. Gonna lag it again. Because that's an eagle putt. Basically just want to make birdie here. I don't need to be crazy and try to go for eagle, right? Okay, so kicking birdie. So now we're up to one under. Six hole, again, there's really no need to hit driver here because if you hit driver, you're going to bring all this stuff into play. Just hit into the fat part of the fairway. So that's the difference. Dave, Dave basically hits driver on every hole, maybe three wood. And for guys, you know, PGA Tour pros now, they can hit a five wood, you know, almost 300 yards. So you don't have to hit driver on every hole. So 120, again, it's going to run out, but I'm going to try to put spin to basically stop it from rolling out as much. All right, so about pin high. So I hit it about the right distance. See, I missed it one degree to the left. So now I'm going to do a regular putt. Just missed it. Should be an easy par. So one under after six. So this is about what Dave was, right? Dave was like one or two under um, for most of the round up until the 16th hole. So another another hole, you have a humongous green. It's a double green. And then you have a landing area here. You don't want to hit driver because you're going to bring this nasty pop bunker into play. So you definitely do not need to hit driver here. So he yanked it and brought that bunker into play. That was a poor hit. It was, he was two degrees to the left. But I aimed over here, so two degrees is not that much of a difference. So now I'm in the pop bunker. So again, going for here is, is basically a non-starter. I just want to hit it anywhere in the middle of the green is fine. All right, just missed the green. He's on the fringe. So now I have... Another shot, I will hit it about, I need to see, there's a basically a, a ridge here where if you don't get it over the ridge, it's going to head back this way. If you do get it over the ridge, it's going to trickle down to the hole. So again, I need to figure out the exact distance here. That's probably going to be a bit too much. It's going to roll off the green. All right, so now I'm in damage control, right? I'm already lying four. It's a par four. So basically, the mo the best I could do is chip in for par. So right now I have to think, okay, I really just want to make a bogey here. So I don't want to do anything to screw up. So I'm going to play somewhat conservatively. All right, he hits a good pitch. All right, I took my bogey. So now I'm back to even par. Par three, big green. There's a ridge here again. Pin all the way to the left. You know you don't want to aim to this pin because if the player hit, miss hits it even one degree to the left, it's going to end up off the green, right? So let's aim a little bit to the right. If you want, you could put a little bit of draw on it. And that's fine. That's about all I'm looking to do on this kind of hole. All right, par again. So after eight holes, we're even par. Ninth hole, short par four. I could probably drive this green if I hit a good drive.
that's going to end up in a bunker. So that's a bit unlucky. You get an unplayable line. Some of these pop bunkers, which means the ball's up against the, uh, the, the face of the bunker. So in this case, player missed it one degree to the right. But since I aimed over here, one degree, guys, that's all, that's all it takes uh, to move the ball that far. So I'm going to take my drop. And now I'm just going to try to hit a bunker shot basically onto the green. Uh, it shows me that the chance of contact is average about 84%. So if I hit it where this thing is, it's, I'm probably going to end up a little bit short. I'm going to aim a little bit further. And he totally hit a bad shot. Again, it happens. He only hit 44% uh, contact. So again, at this point, I'm in damage control. I'm just trying to just trying to get up and down from this point and take a bogey. Like I don't I don't need to get crazy here. All right. So I took my bogey and ended up in the pop bunker. Took an unplayable lie. So yes, that was that bad luck. Yes. Did the player miss hit the ball? Yes. But was it like a major miss hit? No, it wasn't. He missed it a little bit, but it's because that's where I aimed. So again, on this hole, if you want to risk ending up in this pop bunker, I can try to drive the green again. That drive looks to be a little bit better. Looks like it's going to be a little bit short of the green, but that's fine. But again, these are just strategic decisions you have to make during the course of a round. Green runs away from me, so the ball's going to run even further than I think. I really only need to hit it about here, maybe even a little bit less, and put a lot of spin on it. See how much that ball runs when the green runs away from you? So now I'm within eight feet. I'm going to try to be aggressive and make the putt. Okay, good putt. Made his birdie. Back to even par. The 11th is a short par 3. Uh, the pin is right in the middle of the green. You have a backing slope uh, behind you. You have a fronting slope that will repel the ball. So basically, I just want to hit anywhere past this bunker. Uh, just clear the bunker should be good. So 169. So that should be okay. That should hit the slope. Funnel right down to the pin. Within six feet. I'm going to try to be aggressive again. Rolls it in. Two birdies in a row. Back to one under. Now's where the course starts getting a little challenging, right? You have out of bounds on the right. You have all this deep rough, not a lot of area to, to land because you have a lot of these pop bunkers in the middle of the fairway. So basically, I just want to be a little bit short. I don't even need to hit a wood. So I hit my four iron right in the fairway, so end up in a good spot. So now I'm in prime position. I still only have 87 yards to the pin. The pin's in the front part of the green. There's a slope behind it. So basically I just need to hit anywhere in here and the ball should kind of funnel back down to the, where the pin is. I just want to make sure I get it onto the green. I don't need to blast it. percent chance of making the putt. Missed it. Another par. Still one under. All right. So another, you know, challenging hole. You have bunkers encroaching on this fairway. This looks to be the fairway area where, where most people would aim. But if you aim right here, 
if you miss even one degree to the left, you're going to end up in one of these bunkers. If you miss one degree to the right, you're going to end up in this deep rough. The conservative play is right here. And you don't need to hit a driver again. So look, my player pulled it to the left, but I'm still okay. So I missed it almost three degrees to the left, but I'm still in the fairway because I took a, cons I took a conservative line off the tee. Big giant green. You have a bunker here. Really anywhere around here would, would be great. So I'm just going to... If I hit 143, it's going to run all the way out. I really need to only hit it maybe 95. Hope it gets past that rough. Caught the rough. And that's what slowed it down, prevented it from hitting the green. I hit this area here. Alright, so now I basically just want to lag. I don't need to get crazy here. I'm just trying to make par. Alright, so another par. So one under after 13. Again, challenging par of the course coming up. Big fairway here. You can see I can basically hit driver on this hole because if I hit to the right, yes, I bring out of bounds in the play. If I hit a shorter club, I basically am bringing these bunkers into play. So, you know, I in this case, I really do want to just aim a little bit to the left. And if I run out I really have to hit it about 3.30 to, to get into the rough, so. So, see, on Lynx course, the ball ran 62 yards, uh, carried 283, and, and rolled 62 for 345 yard drive. Missed it two degrees to the right. Again, a couple degrees either way shouldn't be the end of the world if, as long as you're aiming conservatively and not right at the marker of where out of bounds is. So I can either lay up and try to pitch on, or I could try to get it onto the green and two in this par five. Um, if I go for it with a wood, his five wood carries 243, so it's going to basically run all the way through, right? And I don't want to end up in this deep rough behind the green, so I'd rather play a little bit conservatively. And if I roll back down, that's fine. I'll just pitch up from there and deal with it. So I got a bad bounce off of this uneven line in front of the green, but at least I'm not in a bunker. So now I have... It's letting me uh, putt if I want, which is nice. Um, in this case, I actually think I'd rather try to pitch the ball. All right, so now I have a little less than five feet for birdie. Notice this is on a you know pretty sloped area, so even though I'm only five feet, I still only have an 80% chance of making the putt. I mean... That's, you know, realistic at, at some of these courses. Knocks it in. Back down to two under. Uh, this is, you know, we're getting close to the part of the course where Dave had uh, some issues. Um, you know, very narrow driving area. You have all this deep rough. And deep rough is not fun to play out of, right? So why even bring this into play? Why don't we just try to play for, like, the conservative area. So a little five wood. I'm in the fairway. He still hit a 291 yards. I mean, you know, you don't have to hit driver on every hole. Um, So 155 gets me about to the edge of the green, but again, there's going to be a lot of um, run out on a link course, and the, the the green slopes away, so that that's extra run out. So 
in this case I have a decision do I want to take something off of the 9 iron or hit a wedge with more than 100% uh, when you go over 100% you bring basically any anything that's not like a 100% shot a 75% shot or a 50% shot is kind of somewhat um, it, it could be you know more more prone to a miss hit when you start taking off you know little slivers of percentages so in this case I'm gonna try to just hit a uh, I'm going to try to hit a high, 150. I do have the wind helping me, so he missed that to the right. Again, when you when you use high shots, that also brings more miss hits into play, right? So anything that's not a regular shot. So if you do, you know, a high shot or you try to, you know, put a lot of uh, fade or draw on the ball, all that stuff, you know, potentially causes more miss hits. And, and they get exacerbated by the amount of wind. So again, I have a less than five foot putt. I still only have an 80% chance of making it. So the percentages have actually been with me, even though I've had only four out of five chances of making some of these putts. I've made, uh, you know, the five foot putts that I need to make. So it's kind of holding my round together. So I still have uh, two under par, head to the 16th hole. This hole was one of... Uh, the bugaboos during Dave's round. I noticed that Dave aimed for, you know, about right over here, and he did have wind that was in the opposite direction a couple miles an hour, but he was hoping that the wind would kind of play. The point I was trying to make in the um, in the YouTube comment was even this is like an extremely dangerous line, right? Because even if you miss a fraction of 1%, you can miss 0.5% and the ball's going to end up out of bounds. The conservative play that Tiger Woods used to do when he, you know, was playing back in the day would be to hit over here, and he would just hit an iron. He wouldn't even hit a wood because you're still going to only have, like, a, you know, less than 150-yard shot into the green. So I take a very conservative line. And again, out of bounds runs the whole way. So I got to be smart. I can't just go with this pin because if I miss a little bit to the right, I'm going to end up out of bounds. So I really got to aim somewhere around here. It gets me nicely on the green. So yeah, I'm not two feet away for birdie, but I do have at least a chance at a birdie. And I eliminated any, you know, possibility of me getting into big trouble by hitting out of bounds and kind of blowing up my whole round. So still two under after 16. 17th hole. One of the hardest holes in golf. That's always been the case. Out of bounds runs this entire length of the hole, right? So, you know, in real life, you know, if this was three-dimensional, the hotel, you know, is obviously, you know, hundreds of feet off the ground. Players actually hit over the corner of this hotel in order to find the fairway. Again, your choices are you can either try to hit, thread the needle and find this area, or you can aim way left. So I'm going to aim way left. And in this case, he pulled it left. So now I'm way left. Very difficult shot, right? So now there's out of bounds immediately behind the hole. So I can either play at this and potentially bring all this trouble all this uh, all this stuff into, into play or I can try to be smart and not ruin my round here 
So since I'm in the rough, you see I only have a 94% uh, average chance of good contact. So I need to find something that can hit about 185. So that kind of brings all this out of play. Like I can't reach this far. So I'm going to basically just try to hit it this far. Didn't reach it. So now in the deep rub. So now I'm in trouble, right? I can't reach this area because I'm uh, I have terrible lie. So I'm just again playing out to the side. So now I lie four. So I'm not going to make a par on this hole. I'm probably going to make a bogey. So I just want to get it somewhere in the middle of the green and give myself a chance at bogey. Just missed going in. Okay, good bogey. You know, sometimes a bogey can be a good bogey, right? I ended up in a deep rough. The first shot was a bit unlucky in that he pulled it. Yes, the player mishit the ball. That's fine. It didn't completely ruin me, take me out of the hole. The second shot was a poor shot. But then at that point, I knew I was going to probably end up trying to get a bogey. So, again, don't compound damage when it can be avoided. Finishing hole. I've out of bounds all to the right, so I don't even want to mess around with this side. I want to aim like way to the left. That's going to be just short of that sloped area, which is called the Valley of Sin. So now I have a little... I can either uh, do a short game shot, like a pitch shot or a lob shot, or I can putt. Since it's going to let me putt, I'm going to let I'm going to putt and just lag it and try to get it close. All right. So now I have 4 feet for birdie. Knocked it in. So same course, roughly same conditions, same player. Um 2 under. Right. So You know, some, some of the changes, yes, I did not have a massive miss hit on 17 um, like Dave did. You know, that happens. That's unfortunate. But my player did miss hit the ball. But again, that's expected. You know, players, players in real life, professional players do not hit the ball where they aim every time. If they did, if you looked at the stats on PGATour.com, you would see the players hit 100% of the fairways. They don't. The best players in the world, the best players in the world, will only hit seven out of ten times. Think about that. <laughs> I mean, fair, fairways are large, and these guys are really, really good, and they still only hit fairways seven out of ten times. You know, it's the same with greens. You know, seven or eight out of ten times is considered excellent. Uh, you know, um, I, th I think players. Uh, gamers who don't know a lot about golf, um, it helps to watch some of these videos and hopefully by explaining how to kind of think your way through a round, it'll help you to uh, minimize any mistakes. You know, the, the game engine is a closed game engine and I understand that can be frustrating when you don't understand where the results are coming from. You know, the results are based on your decisions, which are where you're aiming, which club you're using, if you're putting any kind of, you know, draw or fade on the ball, what percentage of uh, the 100% you're using to hit the ball. There's also environmental uh, variables that will affect the outcome of the shot, meaning what's the weather, what is the wind, how hard is it blowing, what direction is it blowing, what are the conditions of the course, is the course firm, is the course soft, uh, all that stuff comes into play. And then obviously the player's rating. You know, Cameron Smith, if you looked at his player rating, 
which I don't have up. Um, let's see if I can bring it up. So, you know, he, he's he's an excellent short putter. He's pretty good at a lot of a lot of things. His his driving accuracy is not all that great. So, you know, his, his driving accuracy his distance is fine. Driving accuracy is, you know, not super great. Um, it's okay. Uh, he's very good with his irons, and he's very good putter. So. You know, in in that case, you know, you saw issue, uh, you saw instances where I was playing, you know, pretty conservatively. Even though he hits the ball pretty far, I don't need to hit driver on every hole, right? Sometimes you want to hit an iron. Uh, sometimes placement is more important than distance off the tee. For a course like St Andrews, where the back nine, basically the entire, um, almost the entire back nine the right side of every hole is basically out of bounds. So I want to be smart. I want to take that out of play. Yes, players may miss hit, and then you may end up over there. But if you're aiming way left of, you know, what you think the ideal line is, you kind of help to mitigate that factor. And that's what players do in real life. Again, you could watch any of the, you know, you can watch any of the British Opens that Tiger Woods won at St. Andrews. I mean, on those holes... He's sometimes playing way left of where, uh, you know, you, you think a normal player would be hitting. Uh, you know, TV coverage doesn't necessarily show all that, but, you know, if you see the areas that he's hitting to and you kind of compare that to the imagery of the course, you understand, yeah, he's aiming, like, way left. Um, so, again, I hope this, you know, this isn't a knock on Dave. Dave Dave's a good guy, and I, he does a great job for the community and, and you know, is really passionate about... Um, you know, playing some games and, and trying to explain what makes certain games, uh, you know, good. And I totally get his frustration. Um, you know, I, I feel bad that he's had issues with this game. Uh, all I can say is, you know, that hasn't been my experience with it. And having spent the last, you know, six, uh, six or seven years, you know, kind of working on um, courses for the game, and other add-ons, I kind of, maybe I have a little bit better, better understanding of the game, and I'm also, you know, a long-time fan of golf, uh, pretty much my whole life, so I kind of understand a lot of the strategic thinking. Um, again, all, all this stuff can be learned, you just have to be patient, um, you know, it's not a, it's not a, a button-mashing game by any means, so uh, hopefully, you know, you give it a shot, you kind of, you know, won't give up, give up on it so easily, and will take a little bit of time to uh, to learn the intricacies because I think it's a super deep game uh, when you're willing to put in the time. Thanks for listening. Take care.